Hey everybody, welcome back. And today is day 11 of our EKG challenge. Remember, we're going to be going for 30 days through a different EKG concept and every day building on each other so that at the end of the 30 days, we have just so much cardiac physiology that we've learned about for EKGs. Uh, if you enjoy the video, don't forget to like it, comment your thoughts, and we'll go from there. So today we're going to be starting to dive into more deeper into our atrial arrhythmias, and we're gonna begin with atrial flutter. Uh, and atrial flutter, as its name suggests, is an atrial tachyarrhythmia that is formed by, uh, creates some type of flutter wave morphology. And so I wanna to talk to you a little bit about what is going on here. So one thing that we're gonna talk about is this atrial flutter is a rhythm that arises from the atria. It most often arises from this region, a re-entry pathway. So when you're talking about, starting to talk about re-entry circuits, it's a re-entry pathway within the atria. So atrial flutter it's re-entry re-entry within the atria. Specifically, signals get caught in the pathway and they re-enter this circuit over and over and over again. Right? Usually that doesn't happen because our sinus node fires off. It sends signal down in this wave of depolarization. It's a wave of depolarization and then it repolarizes and it resets again. And that's how we usually get our sinus depolarization. But sometimes what can happen is there's this region, if you remember, here's our tricuspid valve, right? Our tricuspid valve sits in between the right atria and the right ventricle. And sometimes what can happen is signals can get caught circling around the tricuspid annulus, annulus meaning ring. So the ring of fibers around the tricuspid valve, and we can get signal that continues to go around and around this tricuspid annulus. What happens is if signal gets stuck in this pathway, it can continue to go around and around and around and around, and it'll create this reentry circuit. Every time it goes around, it sends signal into the atria and depolarizes the atria. So if every single time this reentry circuit goes around and around and around, uninhibited, it's gonna send this wave of depolarization across the atria, creating what we see as our flutter waves. And so those flutter waves are going to be occurring predictably, and they're gonna be very fast, so it's gonna be flutter, 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 because it's happening in the atria over and over and over again. So that is the basic concept of the reentry circuit within atrial flutter, but now we have to talk about what happens to the rest of the rhythm. So first thing I'm gonna do when I look at this EKG is I'm gonna notice that if I just scan through, I've got a regular rhythm. If I look here, I notice I've got regular rhythms. They're happening at a rate of say, this lands decently on a solid line, 300, 150, 175, probably 72 beats per minute. It's pretty regular. I look for P waves, and I notice that there's kind of a baseline pattern. There's, there's not really a distinct sinus P wave before my QRS complexes. My QRSs, they are narrow. So that tells me if my QRS is narrow or less than 120 milliseconds, that tells me that my QRS is being generated by the AV node, which is passing the signal down, right? Remember that causes our narrow QRS complex because it's his Purkinje fibers are really uh, rapidly depolarizing fibers. I'm trying to figure out what the baseline atrial activity is. And what I notice is if I look maybe here at lead three, you can look at some other leads, I see I have this baseline pattern that's happening over and over and over again. And if I uh, kind of continue through, I notice that it's a regularly occurring pattern. So I might think maybe there's atrial flutter. And so now that we say that we have potentially an atrial flutter, 
you can look really good here at, at V1. V1 always has really nice sharp flutter waves. See these nice sharp flutter waves. Now we need to understand what's going on with the QRS complex. If this is atrial flutter, can I explain these QRS complexes? And yes, so this is how the QRS complex is generated in atrial flutter. So remember I said that we have all these flutter waves that um, are going about the tricuspid annulus and they're sending these wave of depolarizing forces across the atria. And notice that if I count the rate of these flutter waves, we've got a flutter wave here, here. They're very fast, right? Do you notice how fast these flutter waves are? These flutter waves, if I look, they're about 300 beats per minute. It's very fast. This is a very fast flutter wave. So if you imagine that at a rate of 300 beats per minute, we're having signal go around the tricuspid annulus at a rate of 300 beats per minute, right? This is just on this EKG. Normally atrial flutter, this occurs anywhere between 250 beats per minute. So we're in the ballpark. So if, if we're getting signal slung across the atria at 300 beats per minute, that means the AV node, which is sitting right here, is being bombarded by that signal at a rate of 300 beats per minute. And we know that the AV node is typically not healthy enough. It's, it actually is just not capable enough at all at conducting every single 300 beats per minute signal. And thank God it's not, because the AV node is what protects the ventricles in this case. It is very protective. So the AV node is going to send every other or every third or every fourth. And so what we need to do in atrial flutter, when we, when we, when we say that we have these flutter waves like we do, here are our flutter waves, we now have to determine at what ratio is there our AV node at what ratio is that AV node sending signal down to the ventricles? Because our QRS complex is going to be, uh, or the rate of it is going to be a function of the AV nodal conduction of these flutter waves, right? And this is the protective uh, nature of the AV node. So what we can say is that the AV node is a bystander, a bystander, meaning it's just there. It's not a part of the rain tree circuit, but it's being um, asked to do its job in a different fashion because of this rain tree circuit. And so then once that signal gets to the AV node and it decides to pass it down, then the AV node will pass it down in the normal function that it always does, nicely through that Hispurkinji fibers. And if our um, ventricular conduction system is not diseased, we will get normal, typical conduction of our QRS. And so let's take a look and see if we can understand, based on this rhythm, how many QRS complexes um, are occurring, or excuse me, how many atrial flutter waves occur per QRS. So I look here, uh, maybe I'll use this AVF lead. And so I'll notice that I've got one flutter wave there, two flutter waves, three, and then a fourth. And then after that fourth, I get a QRS complex. And then I got do a different color. One, two, three, four flutter waves, QRS complex. So what I'm seeing here is four flutter waves, one, two, three, four, for one QRS. And that would be four to one. That terminology is flutter wave to QRS. So that's each your flutter with four to one conduction. And then you want to make sure that you have four to one conduction throughout the rest of the strip, which we do. A really good lead to do this with is V1. Notice that V1, it's got a nice flat baseline, but it's got these nice spiky P waves. It's really helpful. It's really difficult also when you're counting this to always look for the, the flutter wave that is on the T wave, right? So you got to see through, so you got flutter, 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 that's four to one. But notice that these T waves here, this is a T wave, T wave, T wave, the T wave makes it a little bit more difficult to see and visualize the flutter wave because you have a flutter wave at the same time as the T wave. Remember the flutter was in the atria, 
a T wave is representing ventricular repolarization, so they're happening simultaneously. You just have to recognize and kind of see through that. So this is atrial flutter with four to one conduction. And so this is fixed four to one conduction. This means that every fourth time, so if I erase all of this, so we've got this reentry pathway, so this is going one time around and it sends signal through the atria. Then it goes another time around, sends signal through the atria. And then it goes around a third time and it sends signal through the atria. And every single time it sends signal through the atria, it sends signal through the AV node and the AV node hasn't conducted it yet. And then at, once it does it to the fourth time, sending signal through the atria, the AV node captures the signal and says, I'll let this one go down and generate my QRS. And then it cycles again, where it's gotta go around one, two, three, four, and then it'll send signal down. That's what four to one atrial flutter means. So obviously, if we have a really rapidly conducting atrial flutter and we wanna slow it down, well, we can give medications that slow the AV node down. Maybe like a metoprolol or verapamil, things that specifically target the AV node to slow that, the, that uh, region down. Because then we know that we would slow down the atrial flutter. We wouldn't obliterate the atrial flutter, but we would just slow it down. So that's what atrial flutter is. Remember that atrial flutter is a reentry pathway within the atria. And that reentry pathway usually occurs at a rate of 250 to 300 beats per minute. So we should see some type of repetitive flutter waves occurring at a rate of 250 to 300 beats per minute. Remember then that the QRS complex is then formed as a function of how often the AV node passes that signal down to the ventricles. So we have to assess then, to assess my AV node here, I have to assess what is the ratio of flutter waves to QRS complexes. That's how I assess my AV node. The next thing I'm gonna do is look at my QRS complexes themselves and say, well, if this QRS is being formed by the AV junction and pass down, I should see a narrow QRS complex that's upright in lead one. This upright in AVF has a normal axis. It should have normal ROF progression, all those things. And then you put it all together and that's how you figure out that this is atrial flutter. So I hope this uh, little lesson helped on what exactly atrial flutter is and, and uh, is all about. Um, if you have any questions, throw them in the comments. And if not, we'll see you on tomorrow's video. Have a good day.